Hello and welcome to News Click. The World Health Assembly concluded this Monday and Tuesday, that is the 18th and 19th of May. And unlike many other assemblies in the past, there was a lot of drama around this particular meeting. There was a lot of discussion around COVID-19. The blame game, especially by the US, continued against China. And to discuss more about this, we have with us Ambassador M.K. Bhatra Kumar. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. So first of all, the most important news that has got out, that has come out from this World Health Assembly, which is the managing body for the World Health Organization, is that there's going to be some kind of probe on the origins of COVID-19. Now, many media organizations are spinning this as some kind of an implicit charge against China. So is that really what transpired? Well, Prasant, thank you for uh, inviting me to this program. Well, uh, there is uh, surely a lot of uh, uh, propaganda on this. On, uh, when it concerns China, it's inevitable, uh, especially in the Western media. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, this resolution signifies a consensus. That's very important to understand. Uh, this consensus was reached on Monday. And uh, this consensus uh, reflects China's support for this resolution. So this is uh, far from an anti-China resolution. This is uh, a resolution which China is supporting. And its uh, sponsors include Russia. And you can uh, very well imagine that, uh, you know, Russia would never do and it never indulge in an anti-China ganging up at this point in time in uh, world politics. So uh, that notion, that lie, blatant lie, let us set aside. As far as the second point that you made is concerned, this is truly reflective of the overwhelming opinion in the world community. This is unanimously passed, as you know, and 194 countries. And in today's divisive world, that's a, certainly a very rare happening. The consensus, the, the overwhelming majority of opinion is that the world must know about this, hap what happened, because this should not repeat. This kind of a thing, if it happens, how the world can mobilize and prepare and counter effectively without this sort of a mammoth scale of loss in human lives and in terms of the right. destruction of economies in so. So you see, China is also quite in favor of that approach. This must be uh, evaluated what really happened. As you know, there is no reference in the resolution to China or Wuhan or any such thing. So this, what does this imply? This implies that what happened in China, what happened anywhere else in the world, especially those countries where horrific uh, events took place, such as most uh, conspicuously the United States, right. then Spain, Italy, France, and so on. Uh, all this need to be evaluated scientifically, objectively, impartially, without ascribing any motives to any particular party. But this is what the resolution is about. And uh, this, if anything, I may sum up and say, is a highly disagreeable proposition to the United States and to President Trump, because their game plan was not at all this. This has undercut their game plan. Therefore, let me conclude saying that this is not something against China. This is something that Trump is finding extremely difficult to learn to live with, which explains that uh, ultimatum or threat or whatever that he has given to the WHO. So uh, to build a bit on that po last point you were suggested, say, talking about, so Trump for over a couple of months has been pushing the argument of A, this being a Chinese virus, so to speak. The uh, argument number two, that the WHO has completely failed. It was completely under Chinese influence. 
and somehow or this bahav this narrative is not really found support even among his closest allies in the european union so was the world health assembly also a reflection of the fact that on this issue especially the us is more or less isolated absolutely the 27 member countries of the european union are backing this 54 member countries of the africa group is sponsoring this so you see it's abundantly clear where we stand that the united states has been completely isolated the world opinion is that this is not the time to get into acrimonies because something of momentous importance to humanity and to the stability of the international order is unfolding we are nowhere near the end of it and no one knows what the end is going to be like no one knows where the where the end is going to be and how it is going to be and when we are all struggling in the midstream this is not the time to rake up controversies to do finger pointing so you see this is this is this is the whole point and this is something which is uh, completely uh, undercutting the motivations of the trump administration and there particularly the political objectives of president trump himself in this election year in the united states trump it's very well recorded it's very well documented by americans themselves researchers scientists medical community media political class and so on that he refused to even acknowledge that there was a crisis looming on the horizon and he finally came to admit acknowledge the problem only in march towards the end of march by then this virus was all over the united states and they hadn't done any kind of preparatory work and you know i don't want to get into the controversies it is all there very well documented in the american media as to what was going on there and this has brought them to this horrific situation of something like 100000 people losing their lives and that figure may even exceed this uh, 100000 uh because we really do not know some people speak about second wave and so on and so forth so for trump at this point in time it is not so much the covid 19 it is not so much the uh, preparations that are uh, uh taking place in the united states to cope with the um uh with the, with the, with the, with, the uh, with the pandemic but it is the reopening of the economy that is his number one priority it's quite clear you know even though you know many states in the united states have shown great reluctance to abruptly opening up everything trump wants this why is that because in his election campaign economy is the only trump card that he could show that he did he could claim that he did well on this on that side but now that is right. possible for him to show at this time unemployment is touched historic levels this is the and distress social distress is uh, very much there for everyone to see what is happening in that country so you know he has nothing to claim as uh, success and uh, then there is always this that between now and november there may be a second wave or there may be a another crisis building up no one knows how this uh, virus is hitting and where it is hitting so you see he is using this china bogey as a major distraction so many elements come into it there is an undercurrent of anti china feelings in the united states on one side then there is the uh, his main opponent assuming that it would be joe biden who views china problem differently not through a tariff war and so on but differently in terms of making something like obama's approach to you know just like making china a stakeholder in stability right. and world order and then there is this uh, body of opinion in the united states uh, uh, which is uh, resenting that uh, for the first time in a century the united states is uh, 
dominance globally is coming under challenge and it must be countered effectively. So all these are coercing. And Trump is uh, clearly seeing great potential in building this up as his main campaign plan. Now this is where he has uh, floundered because the World Health Assembly has now come up with a stance what Trump has been always demanding that this should be evaluated scientifically, objectively, impartially. Mm -hmm. Trump's uh, calculation in my reading is that China would never agree. Uh, of course, very few countries would agree an impartial inquiry into its uh, internal body politic. You know, I, you know, India will never agree on a thing like this. Mm -hmm. But China agreed because China is confident that it has nothing to hide. But on the other hand, the tables are being turned now. And it is Trump who will have a problem if searchlights are held on what really happened in the United States. And that will cost him politically very, very heavily. That will cost him. So you see, that is the, that is the whole point. And as far as the WHO is concerned, this last bit that he has given, this threat to the WHO that he will quit, is because he has been tweeting in the recent days that uh, he is reflecting over his earlier decision to freeze the contribution to the WHO. He might rethink, and his revised stance was that the United States' commitment should be made on par with China's, not exceeding China's. But then you see President Xi Jinping has now come up with a stunning uh, offer of yes. $2 billion as China's contribution in the coming couple of years alone to help countries. He has also offered that uh, he will uh, resort to giving debt relief, especially to the African countries. And then on top of it, he has also made the offer that whatever vaccine China develops will be made accessible to the world freely. China will not have a monopoly control over it. And China will ensure that it can be accessed at affordable price. Now you see this last point is the unkindest cut of all in my opinion, because you know Western pharma companies make tons of money when they patent some medicine and then they hold the rest of the world, especially the developing countries, hostage by demanding exorbitant prices. You know, you know, India has experienced this. India has been at the receiving end for drugs, like for cancer and so on and so forth. We know that, you know, we can have beggars can be choosers because, you know, we'll need to depend on these modern drugs which have been, uh, which have been developed. And we are now uh, not at all in a position to uh, demand that it should be sold to us at affordable price. And here Xi Jinping comes and says that he will ensure that these vaccines, four Chinese companies are apparently developing vaccine. And the probability is very high, in my opinion, since he has already now touched this subject at that level, the highest level of Chinese leadership, that they are near, somewhere near a breakthrough. And if they are, the Chinese are not playing, they are putting their cards on the table, they are keeping it to themselves and they are just briefing us about what's going on on the vaccine front in China. But I think they are now somewhere near a breakthrough and they might in fact even outstrip other competitors. And then the Chinese president is saying that he will make it accessible to the developing countries. He mentioned developing countries. Developing countries and he will make it affordable for them. Uh, this is unheard of in modern history, you know, in, in, in this sphere of pharmaceutical industry and business of pharmaceutical industries. Now, you see, Absolutely. Trump was evidently expecting that he would have a monopoly. America would have a monopoly over this. You may have known about uh, three, four weeks ago that the Americans even made a secret offer to buy off a German pharma company. German company, yes. And, uh, and they've announced warp speed now also. Correctly. And their executives were in fact taken to the White House and uh, Trump met them. The battle is so serious. 
trump them. And then they said that they would give any amount of money if this lab is just transferred from Germany to the United States. So you see, the stakes are very high. And Trump's mentality, he sees a mercantilist mind on anything. If he bends down, he must have in his fist a few dollars. This is his mindset. So out of this horrific thing that is happening, he's also calculating how America can make some money out of it. Absolutely. Right. And finally, I just wanted to ask you about the position of India amid all this debate. So we have seen Prime Minister Modi has said that he's had conversations with some world leaders. But India has not occupied any of its traditional positions where it was a leader of the Global South, or for that matter, in the BRICS uh, countries have not come together in any meaningful way on this issue. So India is basically nowhere in the global discourse on this issue. Sadly uh, enough, that is the truth. You have, uh, you have given an exact picture of what is happening. I will only add this to what you said, that not only that, India has ganged up with the United States. You may, not, may know that exactly one week ago, when this uh, opinion was building up in the world community and the United States was getting very acutely conscious that it is being isolated, Pompeo took the initiative to at least to have a few people around the United States so that they don't feel lonesome. I think five countries or something like that joined this endeavor on COVID, specifically on COVID, cooperation on COVID. India was one of them. I mean, I was absolutely shocked that India was one of them. Now, India has uh, so much of opportunity today, in fact, you know, to take over a leadership role because we have a fairly developed pharma industry. If I were in a leadership position, what do I do? I would work very closely with China and try and see if I can create an atmosphere where this vaccine can also be produced in India. Like right. some uh, enterprising entrepreneur in uh, Pune or Bangalore managed to do with a research, uh, researchers in Oxford University. So similarly, you could have done it. And India has a great tradition in uh, pharmacology. Now, this is the kind of thing India could have done. And India could have joined hands with China in making this vaccine and other related drugs at affordable prices to the developing countries. Now, this is the kind of role which India was uniquely, India is uniquely placed to uh, perform. And, uh, you know, it would immensely, it would raise India's stature. Now, what do we have here? Yeah, you have the external affairs minister making a few telephone calls, then distributing, so what is that called, that hydrochloroxin, whatever drug? Hydroxychloroquine. Yes, yes, to a few chaps here and there. And, you know, this is, this is India's role. And then Prime Minister tutoring now and then, you know, with Trump, that we will fight shoulder to shoulder. They're struggling there in the United States. And what is there to fight? You know, we should have actually not gone on these lines with a certain vision that this is a challenge and this is also an opportunity for India to play a global role. We've, we've just goofed up completely. Now, the only good thing is that in this World Health Assembly, a new executive body has been elected and India has been elected. So now even now you look what is the kind of backing, the sentiments, the groundswell of opinion favoring India in the, in the, among the developing countries, African countries and so on. So it's on that basis that India got elected into the executive council. Russia is also there in the executive council. And Russia also has a similar approach towards this, that this vaccine should be universally available. So work together, now build on that. But I really don't know whether we will ever do that because that means, you know, crossing swords with Trump. Because this is uh, going to be disturbing Trump's pharma industry connections. So, you know, I, I can't understand why, you know, what is this policy? There is no policy. The overall tilt there to the, the pivot to the United States, you know, that has become very pronounced through the last uh, couple of years is plain to see, 
especially after this in the second term, is plain to see. I think the external affairs minister is interested basically only in developing a relationship with the United States. That is India's foreign policy today, as far as I can see. So in that uh, line, whatever fits in, fits in. Otherwise, we are not interested. This has come to be the policy. It's, it's very tragic. Thank you so much, Ambassador Badrakumar, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching news.